Okay, so uh, I have you guys are uh, your, your computers. Okay, good. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do today is we're going to talk about roofs, and uh, I've got um, two roofs here. Um, both of these are created by the roof by extrusion command. All right, um, and so that's what I'm going to go over today, and then just kind of some general uh, questions on roofs. So okay, so this is what it's going to look like at the end. All right, and I'm going to go into sketch mode here, so I go to edit profile, and that's what it looks like, basically, the little magenta line here. So when you do a roof by uh, extrusion, you're basically drawing a single line, and then what you do is you pick your roof type from your type selector here. What we've got is kind of the default ones. I've got a generic 12-inch, um, and then a generic 9-inch, uh, so on and so forth. So that's basically what, it's, what we're going to do is... Uh, it, you draw a single line and then the, it extrudes the roof uh, from that. Okay, so let me hit finish there. And I'm going to delete that one and delete that one. Okay. Alright, so let's take a look at the roof command. Um, let's go to the roof command. Alright, so this is the roof command and I get the little drop down menu. You'll see that there's a roof by footprint and roof by extrusion. And then we also have roof by face, and then these two, these three things down here are basically little, little add-ons to your roof. So you can add on a gutter, um, you can add on a fascia board, um, you can add on a soffit underneath there. So these are just add-ons once you've gotten your roof drawn. All right. So the two main ones are going to be roof by footprint and roof by extrusion. So the one we're using for our project is roof by extrusion. So that's the one I'm going to go over today. All right. So like I was saying, what you're going to be doing is just drawing a single line to represent the roof, and you're just drawing the profile of what that roof is going to look like. So if you want a squiggly line for your roof, draw a squiggly line. If you want an angled line for your roof, draw uh, an angled line. Now the thing is, is, what you do is you're going to draw that from your elevation view. So let me go to my um, let's go to my west elevation here. Oops, sorry. Let me go to my north elevation. All right. So I'm going to go out, draw on my north elevation. Now when you draw a single line in an elevation view you need to kind of tell Revit where, where exactly you're going to be drawing that, um, where in space, because it doesn't know. It doesn't know if you want it drawn right here at the face of this wall, or you want it drawn 10 feet back, or so on and so forth. So you guys, basically, when you're drawing roof by extrusion, you have to specify um, a plane in the background uh, in order to draw your roof. So just keep that in mind. When you're drawing roof by extrusion, you need to have some sort of plane in the background to, um, to draw to. All right. So the first thing it basically it tells you to do in the instructions is to draw in this level six here at the top. Uh, I'm sorry, well, that's actually going to be level five on your project. It's level six on mine. And the height of that level is going to be 32 feet. This is basically going to be a point of reference for our uh, roof. We're drawing a barrel roof here, and what we want is basically the height of that roof, the high point, is going to be touching this, um, this level here, this level at 32 feet. All right, so let's go into the command. I'm going to actually start this from my south elevation. So I go to south elevation. Okay, all right. And what I want to do is I'm going to go to my roof command. All right, and get the drop down menu. I'm going to go to roof by extrusion. So click on roof by extrusion. All right, so this is where it's asking you where do you want to put this, where do you want to draw this line in depth. So what I want to do is I want to tell it, um, this is what I've got basically to choose from right now. I've got my grid lines. So let me go to my floor plan for just a second here. And if I go to my floor plan, my O2 sector level, all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this as my um, my reference plane. So this is going to be basically the line or the plane at, at which I'm going to draw that uh, roof extrusion. This is going to be grid line A. All right. So let me go back to that south elevation again. So the instructions say to be in your north elevation, but they meant south elevation. Oh, you can be in either. Actually, to be honest with you, you can be in either your north or south. So it, it won't matter. I do the south because I can see kind of some of these little, you know, I can see the curtain wall and mullions and all that kind of stuff, but, but you can be in either one. So. All right. So what I'm going to do is I go to um, roof and roof by extrusion, and I'm going to show you here in a little bit why it doesn't matter whether you're in the north or south. So, um, okay, so uh, the other thing, too, so I'm going to pick grid line A. Now, the other thing, too, is you can also put in a reference plane. So if you go to the, um, let me just cancel for a second. So if I went to, I'm going to go back to my floor plan view, and I went to the architecture tab, and I can draw over here, I can draw a reference plane. So I can draw a reference plane pretty much anywhere 
in space. I can draw it like right there. I'm just kind of picking a random place. And if I give it a name, so if I select it, and then here's where you give it a name. So I can type in, um, I just type in my own name and hit apply. All right, so this reference plane is called Brett. All right, so long as it has a name, and I'll go back to my uh, south elevation, then I can use that as a reference plane as well for my, uh, for my roof. So let me go back to roof, roof by extrusion. All right, so you'll notice I also have all my grid lines, but then now I also have my reference plane called Brett. So if, you, so if a grid line doesn't happen to work out, you can always you create your own reference plane and draw it to that. But, um, so let's go to grid line A. So go grid line A. Now the, the, other, the, other, the other caveat with that is that you have to have a name for that. So that reference plane has to have a name. If any reference plane that doesn't have a name, you can't draw to. So, okay, so I'm going to use grid line A. Say okay. And we're going to say, yeah, we're going to put, draw this to, let's see, level six. Oops, no, it's level four. We'll do that. Okay. So then uh, we're going to go draw this to level four. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my line command. And I'm going to draw a reference line. So I'm going to draw a line here, use the line command, between three and four along that new grid line at 32 feet. So between three and four at 32 feet. All right, so this line is only going to be temporary. I'm not going to use this at the end. This is kind of a placeholder. I'm going to use my three-point arc. Right, so I pick my three-point arc. All right, and what I want to do is I want to go to the very ends of the walls here. So I want to go out to here. So this is the very outside edge of my um, my stone wall. So I click there. I'm going to click to the outside edge of my other stone wall. Click there. And then I'm going to use that line and use the midpoint of that line that I just drew between three and four. That's going to be my arc here. So I click on that. All right. So now I've got basically the endpoints are the outside edges of my stone wall. And the height of that arc is going to be at the middle point of three and four uh, along that, that uh, reference plane. I'm sorry, on that level at 32 feet. So that's basically it. So now once I'm done with that, I can delete that line between three and four like I just did. All right, so that's it there. All right, and then let's go back to our instructions. Okay, so what it's saying here is, let's see, the main roof, there it is. All right, and let's scroll down here. Okay, so it says before you finish and exit the sketch, um, look at the properties dialog box. The type of the type at the top of the dialog box should be the basic generic 12-inch roof. So that's the roof that we're going to use. That's our roof type. And the extrusion should start at negative 4 and end at 78 feet. All right, so let me explain what, that, what they're basically saying here. So our type is generic 12. All right, so that's the type of roof we're going to use. So I'm going to click on that. Generic 12. Click right there. Got it. All right, so now we basically have a line that represents the profile of the roof. Now you have to basically set a length of it. You know, where does the extrusion start and where does it stop? And so that's where you get it uh, over to here. On the properties dialog box, it's going to say start at negative 4 and extrude to 78 feet. And so that's where I'm going to put that in. So like start, negative 4, extrude, uh, extrusion, extrusion end at 78 feet. All right. And at this point, I'm ready to hit finish. But before I do, I just want to kind of point out, too, on this uh, basic roof here, generic 12-inch. If I go to Edit Type, it looks exactly like it would for a wall. So if we're editing, editing a wall, um, if you go Edit Type, you can duplicate it, rename it, create a, a new roof. And then also here under Structure, if I click on that, this also looks like walls, right? You get a little preview over there. And so just so you know, we're not going to do it with this project, but if you wanted to create a roof type where you had a standing seam metal, insulation, uh, metal studs, that sort of thing, um, you could create it using that, the edit wall assembly. All right, so, but we're just going to keep this pretty basic as a, just a basic generic wall. All right, so now I'm ready to hit finish. I'm going to hit finish. And what it does is it creates my new roof here. So there it is. All right, I'm going to go to my 3D view and take a look. And uh-oh, <laughs> yeah, so that's not quite right. So um, <laughs> uh, so here's, the, here's why it does that. Because, yeah, like about 50% of the students will get this. 50% of it will get a normal-looking roof that looks correct. Um, the reason why is because uh, it depends on when you drew the arc, whether you drew it from left to right or right to left. And so what happens is um, 
Uh, so all you have to do to fix that is just switch these numbers. So change that to, I think, let's see, it'll be, um, that'll be 78 feet, and this will be negative 4. Let's try that. So just reverse them. Oops. Well, maybe not. I'm sorry. Maybe that's positive 4 and not 78 feet. There we go. Okay. So yeah, switch it around. So negative 78 feet and 4 feet. All right. So that looks a little bit closer to what we wanted. <laughs> so so that's why it does that. So if you do get your roof going backwards like that, just switch the numbers um, and also switch whether, which one's positive and which one's negative. All right. So this is our roof. And then when, to finish it off, basically what you want to do is just um, pick that stone wall and I can say attach top base. And then I select the roof. And it basically it uh, extrudes that wall up so it goes to the underside of the roof, so it attaches that wall to that roof. So I'll do it again on the other side. I select the wall, go to the ribbon, it says attach top base, then select the roof that you want to attach it to. And that'll do it. And so that's basically the gist of, of drawing roofs by uh, extrusion.